The Alternative Energy Enterprise is a multidisciplinary team at MTU whose goal is to create or improve technologies to contribute to a sustainable future where our energy needs are met via carbon neutral sources, lowering our carbon footprint and allowing for energy independence in local communities. The enterprise has projects in many fields, including solar, biofuels, sustainable transport, and sustainable residential practices. While all of our projects are very important to the sustainable development of the future, they all require one thing that our current energy portfolio is severely lacking, energy storage. We, the AEE Pumped Underground Storage Hydro, or PUSH team, are working to fill this need. The way we generate our electricity is changing, and with this change comes a problem. As more nations pledge to go net zero in the coming decades to combat climate change, the share of renewable resources, such as wind and solar energy, has steadily grown over the last few years. If we are to reach a 100% decarbonized energy grid by 2035, we need to solve the major problem of resource dispatchability. The electricity market depends on readily available energy sources in order to meet changing demands throughout the day. One of the downsides to renewable wind and solar technologies is that they can't be easily dispatched to meet demand. We can't control when the sun shines or how hard the wind blows. Switching to a 100% renewable grid can cause issues such as fluctuating consumer prices and a risk of grid destabilization. The solution to this problem is energy storage. Around the world, a common method of storing unused renewable energy is by converting it to hydroelectric potential. This is done through the use of pumped storage hydro plants, or PSH plants for short. Traditional PSH facilities are difficult to site due to high costs, environmental concerns, and the need for elevation differences close to natural bodies of water. We are looking into the potential of converting abandoned mines into pumped underground storage hydro push facilities. One way to conceptualize a push plant is to think of it like a giant water battery. Here's how it works. During times of low demand, available energy is purchased at a low price and used to pump water from a lower reservoir to an upper reservoir. Then, when demand rises again later in the day, the water can be drained back into the lower chamber through a turbine, converting the potential energy back into electricity. Abandoned mines are prime targets for this variation as they offer large hollowed out areas and are often already flooded. On top of cost reductions and environmental factors, push facilities make a useful tool out of unused infrastructure which is currently a detriment to local communities. Abandoned mines cost communities money to maintain at a minimum safety level, money which is unbeneficial to the community and does not provide any source of income. Push facilities have the potential to garner massive community support, possibly reinvigorating struggling areas left behind with the exit of the mining industry. In collaboration with professors at the Keweenaw Energy Transition Lab, we are interested in the preliminary assessment of an underground pumped hydro plant to determine if these types of energy storage systems are feasible and reproducible in the mines found commonly throughout the Upper Peninsula. Our team began with a geospatial analysis of where in the U.S. abandoned mines existed which met our criteria for a potential push site. These criteria included production size, commodity type, operation type, and development status. This study aimed to find established metallic underground or underground surface mines that are already out of service or will be in the coming years. Using ArcGIS software, the team found roughly 971 potential mine sites in the U.S., with the largest concentrations in the American West and Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Our team also looked to prove that PUSH was economically viable. As we are utilizing abandoned mines as one of our, or both of our reservoirs, land transformation costs are theoretically much lower. Using data pulled from PSH plants published since 2000, the team determined which costs would remain the same and which may be changed between a push and PSH system to quantify potential economic savings. This data was used to determine a per megawatt cost for land transformation costs, electrical infrastructure development, access road development, and other investment areas. In this way, the team has shown that for a 22.5 megawatt system, creating a push system instead of a PSH system could save over $45 million, a nearly 25% cost reduction and the team is currently working to develop a more easily configurable cost analysis tool, reevaluating assumptions previously made with new information available and integrating mechanical and environmental calculators. With push viability showing promising potential, the team has moved on to more physical development of a site design. The team has started development on the fluid dynamics of the system, looking to quantify the power output and input of a given push plant, knowing its starting volume, turbine parameters, and penstock geometry. This has led to final MATLAB program that outputs power usage and input. We have moved on to validate our code with a simulation of a hydro plant through the use of AIMSIM, a modeling system that provides a good outlook on the physical components of analyzed systems. 
Through these processes, we hope to achieve a more holistic understanding of the mechanical aspects of the system and the boundaries that naturally appear. The team is also working through comparing design configurations. These configurations relate to either storage type or the placement of reservoirs relative to grade and the water table. The team created a decision matrix with important factors influencing design choices, those being environmental impact, cost, accessibility, and safety, and weighted them according to our predicted importance. From these and our different design choices, we decided that the best design for the Upper Peninsula's mines would feature a closed loop water system and sit above the water table, pictured as option 3. However, mines and environments differ, and the formulaic approach to the design choices make the design customizable to any case. The push electrical design requires minimal alterations from a conventional pump storage facility, as the electrical components required for both to function properly are identical. Site-specific restrictions can alter the physical layout of a push facility and potentially limit the number of pump turbine units. Another consideration is the relative location of electrical equipment, which may lead to changes in approach to power system protection schemes. Essential to the selection of push sites is their relative location to electric grid infrastructure, specifically transmission lines rated 138 kilovolts to 765 kilovolts which serve as the connection between generating sources and the local distribution system. By selecting sites close to existing transmission lines, additional costs for new line builds can be avoided. The team has also begun to work on testing pertaining to the water quality of potential push locations. Water quality is a main concern due to the potential for mobilization of harmful contaminants. In decommissioned mines, various minerals, organic and inorganic compounds, and chemical processing agents are often left behind from the mining industry. Ultimately, the goal is to prevent the spread of harmful contaminants to the surrounding environment and to preserve the integrity of the equipment within the mine by restoring the groundwater in the push system to a safe environmental standard. The water treatment mechanisms required to achieve this objective will depend on the contaminants found at a given mine site. The environmental team has begun preliminary testing to design a water treatment system using Quincy Mine and Hancock as a base case for water quality. For example, the team conducted a jar test to assess the feasibility of coagulation and flocculation as a water treatment method, and we're also looking into other water treatment mechanisms as well. In the treatment system design process, each site poses unique challenges with a unique range of contaminants. Thorough testing for each site should be conducted prior to making a final decision regarding the restoration of the mine water. The future for this technology is promising. The team recently presented our work to industry members at the Michigan Tech Energy Workshop Conference in Traverse City, an event where the MTU Kettle team introduced many new research areas to the broader industry sphere. MTU and Kettle are also exploring new avenues to partner with other companies and industry players to continue research in the push field, hopefully leading to a real implementation of a plant in the coming years. Whether our work leads to a real plant being developed or sparks further research in related fields, the Alternative Energy Enterprise will continue to work diligently towards a cleaner and more sustainable future.